right, so uh, Randy's been a good supporter of the channel for a while. He's the one that uh, pretty much put the floor in the school bus, our school bus RV. And uh, he's been dying for me to build him something. So uh, this is another customer project. This is a Yerf Dog single seater. Um, has a single A-arm design, which is, the single A-arm works pretty decent. You're just gonna get camber as you go through suspension travel. So it means less traction the more you flex the suspension. Uh, but it works pretty well. What he's wanting to do to this is do a semi-independent rear suspension so it'll have the heim joint like the Deuce did or like the blue go-kart we built. He's wanting to do double A-arms on the front, take this row cage off because it's actually not even bolted on no more, and we're going to build him a weld-on row cage because that thing will not protect anything. Even if a kid was to flip it, that cage is probably going to crush. Uh, I, don't, I hope we don't have to lengthen the frame. It's going to be easy if we do, but I don't want to lengthen it. Um, but I just want to make it comfortable for me to sit in it so the roll cage is above my head without a helmet on because I really don't think this guy's going to wear a helmet much. And then someone, he paid a guy to modify this swing arm and it's just awful. Uh, for one, they're not level with each other, but he was basically trying to lift the go-kart. This is almost like a body lift on a go-kart. You're just dropping the swing arm so you're not getting any other, any more ground clearance out of your sprocket and stuff. You're just dropping this down and this is worse in my opinion because then this is hanging down that much it's going to catch everything um, so we're going to cut all that off we're either going to reuse this or build a new one now uh, we do need to put go power sports quarter inch thick engine plate on it we're going to do the five axle bearings and do the portals that stick out make it super strong because he has a 420 that we built on the channel a while back that has a high torque cam and a billet rod stock flywheel though because it's a all low-end engine this is going to be a pretty sweet build have a lot of power the frame is really lightweight like it, it'll bend and break everything's half welded from the factory to save time so we're going to fully weld everything and fix some bad patch jobs and hopefully be able to get this thing done uh, pretty fast that's like the bat buggy that was a customer job we had to do to be able to finish the the buggy this is a customer job we're having to do to be able to finish the buggy so as soon as this is done full bore on the buggy so let's get to stripping this thing down cutting stuff off that we need cut off and getting it ready to uh, mock up the front end Okay, so we got everything like the steering shaft and the tie rods pulled off. These bolts are bad about rusting themselves to the A-arms. They don't put any grease, alamites or anything. And as you can see, if I can do this one-handedly, it does not move. It's just moving the A-arm side by side. Then he's gonna take a sawzall, cut it right there, cut it right there, both of them to get these A-arms off. And we'll start mocking up our new front end. double A arm front suspension. Well, this is the lower A arms, but still. Oh yeah, the front can't be. Ah, those are A arm tabs. Boom, full jungle. So what we're going to be doing on this card for the double A arms is these are my old, my first gen buggy <laughs> A arms. Uh, I wanted to put those large heim joints in these so, and I wanted them unequal length so I took those off my buggy. So what I've done is I'm using the, the original 
upper and lower a arms and i'm basically i normally would just put it as high you know do like a pretty decent gap between these but this go-kart is not going to allow me to do that so what i'm going to do is put ears and put the a arms about that far apart you saw us put these tabs on the bottom now i'm putting this piece of tube in i'll do another one on the other side and i'll brace them to one another to make it all, all strong and i can weld tabs just like these we got to make more of these directly to this that'll hang the the a-arm down that much so a-arm will be you know not a ton spaced apart but about like that so the reason you would do double a-arms instead of uh like a mcpherson strut or a single a-arm this sheriff dog had a single a-arm the disadvantages of a single a-arm is uh your tire isn't going to stay straight up and down the travel because it's a single a-arm that tire has to move with it where on double a arms you can have hind joints on each one so those hind joints can rotate up and down letting your wheel stay straight this one uh the tire is only going to be straight up and down at one point in the suspension so when you squat it like a uh, look at a player's ace it has mcpherson strut so single a arm the more suspension you squat it the more cambered it gets but it'll get cambered this way and then as it goes down it's going to camber out so your only tires are straight i think it something would handle better you can keep your tires you know straight no matter where they're at where so double a arms a lot stronger too because you have two a arms that takes a hit if you was to hit like a big rock with the tire you got four points that it's mounted to the frame instead of two uh, so it does make it a lot more rigid so that's the reason this customer wants double a arms on this buggy uh, so it's really hard to compact uh, you know this is a really compact front end so it's hard to figure out how I was going to do it and I really wanted to use these A-arms because they got like $200 no probably $300 worth of heim joints these chromoly heim joints aren't cheap and uh, I don't want to use cheap heim joints either so so we'll just do the tabs hanging down just like that and we'll have a little bit of kingpin angle of course you want kingpin angle angle of the two heim joints you want that pretty decent and we have a pretty beefy bolt in there so we can extend this now a little bit more to give us more kingpin angle if we need it and i have these bars i'm sure people's wondering because once i get this set up at first that's how wide i wanted my a arms apart it's a little overkill so we're going to drop it down to about there so once this is mounted i can measure from the center of the hole there to the center of the lower a arm and i can drill holes in these flat stock this flat stock to mount it you know angled back the, as much as i want it so it holds everything in place so i can make a schematic do some cad and uh, build me a cardboard template for my spindle this will just have standard 5 8 bolt so we don't have to get nothing machine you just go to uh, rule king and get a grade 8 5 8 bolt pretty long one like maybe 10 inch one and we're going to do double you know it'll be welded on the outside as well as the inside okay so i've made these tabs uh to go from this tube down to this tube just give it strength because like i said we just did these ears hanging down over here and i did not like that so uh we can break these tacks now and replace this one with this style that's just going up and down should give it like i said a lot of strength and we do have a gap right here to weld i cut this a little high no problem none at all baby you know what i'm saying I could gap weld the Grand Canyon <laughs> with a mud rod. So I'm keeping the distance between my heim joints like center to center at four and a half inches. So when I go out here to build my spindle, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to build my spindles like this opposite way that I did my buggy. And the only reason for that is my buggy needed a lot of suspension travel. I wanted a lot of movement. So this way you don't have to, you're never going to run out of travel. The only thing you're going to run out of is steering this is different this don't have a ton of suspension travel you know like the buggy does freaking nap and uh so i can run it like this so we'll be limited on suspension travel not steering the opposite because we're not going to be limited on suspension travel because shock only has so much room he's using those shocks right there off of ebay in the seat those nitrogen shocks uh, i don't know how well they work we've used them on the high tech mini bike which we're getting that out very soon uh it never handled correct correctly that's because monster moto put a real short angle on the front end and we did the forks we copied the original so we need to cut the neck tube and 
you know, give it a little bit more rake to make it handle. It wants to stand itself up unless you're in power, if that makes any sense. So. This is our meal from Harbor Freight, otherwise known as a drill press from China. <laughs> <laughs> Chris would rather be welding things. He's got to set up. Come check out my Chinese Chinese M. Chris, build your own lathe. I buy garbage from China, and I love it. Well, <laughs> um, that's why I don't love it. You should. But you know, you, you aren't OSHA certified like me. Yeah. That's a 30. So I, I needed my A-arm to be the same levelness. So I've taken a piece of PVC pipe jacked up my lower a arm till it's dead level and then i've uh, i can raise and lower this one because i've tacked a piece of 5 16 all thread and put a coupler nut on it and now i can adjust my two a arms out to uh to be able to start measuring for my spindle so we've got the a arms all mounted up now in the next video you'll see us build the spindles mount the shocks and the steering rack and start working on that swing arm swing arm is going to be really close to the the design that the tau tau arrow cart had on it it's just going to be as small and compact as possible to keep this buggy as small and compact as possible but uh randy was also the guy that was driving the yala go uh, go kart at winrock who somehow took that thing through everything that came up against him and uh, by the end of it, he was using a Chinese 40 series torque converter and he actually twisted the back plate uh, just by the chain kicking off. So um, he, learned, he learned from the hard way uh, of don't buy those cheap Chinese 40 series because the backing plates do bend really easy. Go Power Sports backing plate is a ton thicker and uh, stronger when you're working with these big blocks. But every uh, link is in the video description for these heim joints, everything we're going to be using on this go kart. You can go ahead and check it out and you can see the cam we got in that uh, Hemi 420 engine that we're putting on it. So make sure to check those out and thank you guys so much for supporting us. And thank you, Randy, for helping us on the bus and all the support you've given us. It's awesome to meet people like Randy who's willing to give their time up. And, uh, you know, we're more than happy to do a build for him. So we'll be getting this thing done. And I think it's going to be an awesome little go-kart because I want to get the buggy done as soon as possible. And there's uh, not much left to do on it. So uh, stay tuned, guys. We've got a lot of stuff coming up. Thank you so much for supporting us and sticking around. Uh, we're almost 200,000 subscribers. And that's because you guys like and sharing and watching the videos and we can't thank you guys enough and uh always a huge shout out to go power sports for sponsoring these videos uh we definitely couldn't do it without them we've got some uh, videos coming up also on the property so keep your eye out on the old channel we love you guys and god bless